say Rachel and I didn't really at all compare notes today, uh, but she hit on something in her children's sermon that I have been thinking about this week. I have been thinking about waiting rooms. Specifically, I've been thinking about the waiting rooms that some of you all have been occupying. I thought about the waiting room at the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services office, office in Lawrence, where Charlie and Olney recently sat, each one waiting for the other to complete an interview with an immigration officer. I thought about the surgical waiting room at the Leahy Hospital in Burlington, where the Kingston family has waited more than once for their matriarch, Olivia, to emerge from heart surgery. I've been thinking about the courtroom where Corey stood a few weeks ago and waited for a judge to decide about his immediate future. I've been thinking about the mailboxes and inboxes that are proverbial waiting rooms for people like Gillian and Victoria who have applied to schools or to jobs and are waiting to hear whether they are accepted. Most of us, all of the kids, for a, as a matter of fact, except for Jack, who wanted to be different, most of us do not wait very well. Our waiting is often characterized by anxiety. You can see it. We pace back and forth. We fidget. We check the time obsessively. As human beings, we prefer to be in control of our own destiny. When we are waiting, someone else is in control. When we are waiting, we don't have what we want. We don't have whatever it is we're waiting for. When we're waiting, we cannot be certain of the outcome. We can't be certain in the waiting time that we will even get what we want. Will I get a green card or a deportation notice? Will I hear that the surgery has been successful or that there have been complications? Will the judge show compassion or take a hard line? Will the letter say congratulations or thank you but? When our lives and our futures hang in the balance, we would prefer to act, not wait. We would prefer to decide for ourselves. We would prefer not to trust or to risk another person's judgment. We would prefer not to move on someone else's timeline. Most of us do not wait very well. But I think this week, between Ascension today and Pentecost, next Sunday, gives us a chance to rethink how we wait. Just before Jesus ascends to heaven and leaves his disciples for the very last time, he tells them to stay here until you have been clothed with power from on high. When Luke tells it in Acts, he's even more clear. Jesus says to wait for the promise. In John's Gospel, we see that the disciples are anxious about Jesus' departure. They don't know where he is going. They don't know how they will carry out Jesus' mission without him there to guide them. In Acts, we see that the disciples are confused about the goal. They're impatient about the timeline. Is now the time they ask? is now the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel. They're not really even sure what they're waiting for. They have no idea how long the wait might be. Anxiety, confusion, impatience. In the week between Ascension and Pentecost, Jerusalem could have been like any other waiting room. But it wasn't. Before Jesus goes, he lifts up his hands and blesses his disciples. 
Instead of being characterized by anxiety and confusion and impatience, their waiting is a season marked by joy, by worship, by community. How could we, as individuals who wait so badly, experience worship and joy and community in our waiting rooms? Could we experience our seasons of waiting as a time of blessing or blessedness? Could our waiting be transformed from an exercise in anxiety to a spiritual practice that draws us nearer to God and makes us ready for God's future? Could we believe that God blesses us not only at the end of our waiting when we get something that we have wanted badly, but that God blesses us even while we wait? We live in a culture that praises, even idolizes, people who can do it all. Balance work, community, family, and self. Juggling is a highly valued skill in our culture. The more balls you can keep in the air, the more valuable you are. Asking for help is a sign of weakness or failure. We don't all believe that all the time, but I think somewhere inside our culture sends us those messages. And we don't like waiting because waiting forces us to confront our limitations, to acknowledge all of the things that we cannot do ourselves. Waiting requires us to say, I cannot do X, Y, and Z. I need someone else, a doctor, an attorney, a friend to help me. And I have to wait for them to do their part. When we understand that Jesus blesses our waiting seasons, we might come to understand that our limitations are not a sign of weakness or failure. They're a sign of our humanity, a humanity that's shared by Jesus. Our limitations, yes, they require us to ask for help. But blessed waiting reminds us that we are not in this life alone. That, that there are others who are working with us and for us. Blessed waiting opens us to receive the rich resources of the community instead of trying to rely entirely upon ourselves. We also live in a culture that worships productivity and consumption. We measure success by how much wealth someone produces and as an extension, how much they consume. We celebrate people who drive nice cars or have well-appointed homes, people who are well-dressed or well-traveled, our social media habits really reinforce that thinking. They even cause us sometimes to compete with our friends and our neighbors. Waiting is frustrating because it means we can't have everything we want right now. We have to wait for it. But when we understand that Jesus blesses us in our waiting, we remember that our worth and our success are not measured by how much we can produce and how much we consume. Blessed waiting teaches us contentment. To see what we have as enough. Blessed waiting reminds us not to compete with our neighbors, but to celebrate and rejoice with them. Perhaps most importantly, waiting tells us that we are not in control, and we hate that. 
I hate that. We're afraid of that. Receiving Jesus' blessing on our waiting seasons invites us not necessarily to lose control, but to surrender it. In our blessed waiting, we perhaps can acknowledge that much of our idea of control is an illusion. In our blessed waiting, we surrender that illusion to the very real promise that God is finally in control. Doesn't mean we know the outcome or even what we are waiting for. But it means rehearsing, practicing a belief that God will do what God has promised. If we can surrender our illusions of control, then we can walk through our waiting seasons with a spirit of openness. A spirit that says, I do not know what is coming, but I'm open to receive it. When the disciples were waiting for power to come from on high, they stayed put in Jerusalem and stayed together. Being still and being in community help us to transform, to move from anxious waiting to blessed waiting. In waiting for the promised Holy Spirit, the disciples worshipped God. Offering our praise to God, even in times of transition or uncertainty, helps us move from anxious waiting to blessed waiting. So wherever you find yourself waiting in the week to come, whether that's in the checkout line, at the grocery store, or in a federal office building, or a hospital waiting room, whatever you find yourself waiting for, may you remember, may you remember Jesus, who lifted his hands and blessed his disciples, even as he withdrew from them and asked them to wait. May you know that Jesus is blessing you, even in your waiting. May you slow down, perhaps even put down your cell phone, and stand still to receive that blessing. May you gather in community. May you worship. May your waiting teach you that your limitations are not a failure, but a gift an opportunity to receive the resources of the community. May your waiting teach you contentment, that what you have is enough for right now. May your waiting allow you to surrender your illusions of control, deepening your trust in God, and opening you to the surprising joyful and powerful future that God has in store for you. <clears throat> May Jesus bless you, even while you wait. May it be so. Amen. Amen.